Hello everyone, uh, my name is Alan O'Leary. I'm Professor of Film and Cultural Studies at the University of Leeds. Uh, I'm speaking to you today because I co-taught the graduate seminar at The Ohio State University that Dana will already have mentioned. And I've also co-written with Dana an article on the experience of teaching the seminar that's forthcoming in the journal The Italianist. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm sorry I can't speak to you live, but what I've done is I've recorded three short uh, videos dealing with the themes that you see here. In this first short video, then, I'm going to deal with questions of definition. Very simply, what is video, videographic criticism? And I'm also going to deal with some questions of terminology. Why do we call it that? So videographic criticism is a term coined in 2011, I think this is when it was first used, uh, by Christian Keithley, who's a scholar at, the, at Middlebury College in Vermont in the United States. And Chris used it to describe the audiovisual analysis of audiovisual media. Now, Dana may already have mentioned that there's no agreement yet on the proper form that videographic criticism should take. There's no agreement what form it should take, at least in order to qualify as scholarly practice. And this absence of uh, universal agreement, at least, is reflected in disagreements about ter terminology, about what we should call what it is that we do when we do audiovisual analysis. So some practitioners reject the, the term videographic criticism uh, and they prefer terms like audiovisual essay or academic research video, things like this. But the advantage that the term videographic criticism has is that it suggests that audiovisual analysis can be a tool of research. In other words, you can perform research using editing software apps like iMovie, like Premiere Pro, like Final Cut Pro. Um, so it can be a tool of research and not just a means of communicating research results or conclusions. In other words, it doesn't have to be a video essay, even though that's what we're most familiar with. In addition to this, the use of the term videographic criticism has also come to imply that scholarship in audiovisual form shouldn't necessarily try to mimic the protocols of conventional prose scholarship. And Chris Keithley has said that he coined the term videographic criticism precisely to suggest that we should seek a new rhetoric, a new set of protocols, rather than trying to translate the conventions of pro scholarship over into an audiovisual format. So Keithley uh, draws on the work of Laura Mulvey in her 2006 book uh, illustrated here. And he draws on Laura Mulvey to to sit to argue that the new technologies and temporalities of access to the audiovisual text, and I mean by this the ability to freeze frame, to play in reverse, to play in slow motion and so on, these new technologies and temporalities of access imply a new relationship to the material of analysis, whether that be a film or a video game or a series of uh, uh, television or whatever. So Keithley also distinguishes between uh, what he calls the explanatory and the poetic approaches to videographic criticism. Um, the explanatory for Chris is a didactic mode that typically uses voiceover to set out its analyses and to foreground elements of the text under consideration or of the uh, argument that's been made. In extreme or let's say clumsier versions of the uh, explanatory mode, it may resemble an illustrated lecture, a bit like the one I'm currently giving you now. The poetic mode of videographic criticism, on the other hand, uses techniques of remix, remixing, and even a rhetoric of ambiguity uh, to offer something like an experience rather than an argument or necessarily an explicit analysis of the texts that it's considering. And that is, at its extreme, this uh, poetic mode can resemble, let's say, a work of art rather than one of scholarship arguably. 
Now, what Keithley says is that our new relationship with the material we analyse implies in turn the adoption of a new mode of analysis. And for Chris, this is a blend of the explanatory and of the poetic. Now, we asked you to to take a look for today at uh, a five-minute video essay I made on the film The Battle of Algiers. And though I don't use voiceover in this film, it's precisely the, the blend of poetic and explanatory that Chris Keithley recommends or proposes that I was trying to achieve in this video essay. Mr. Van Hady, in your opinion, does the FLN still have some chance of defeating the French army? Keithley himself finds this ideal explanatory poetic blend in the other video essay we asked you to watch for today, uh, What is Neorealism? by the video essayist and feature filmmaker known as Koganada. If I had to conduct an experiment that would yield insight into neorealism, I'd build a time machine and travel to Italy circa 1952. I'd ask Vittorio De Sica to make a film using Hollywood actors like Montgomery Clift and Jennifer Jones. I'd then team De Sica up with a Hollywood producer, the kind that liked to impose his will and sensibility onto a film, someone like David O. Selznick. In bringing these two worlds of cinema together, I'd hope for a clash in sensibilities so great that it would result in two cuts of the same film, one by De Sica and the other by Selznick. I would run these two films side by side and examine each cut and in the difference, I would find something to say about the essence of neorealism. Now, I'll return to a discussion of what is neorealism in my third uh, video. But that's it from this first short video by me. I hope you'll now have the opportunity to for some comments or uh, discussion or questions for Dana. In the next video, I'll discuss the venues where videographic criticism is available and where it is analyzed. In this second short video, I'll be talking about where videographic criticism is available and uh, where scholarship about it can be found. So just to give you a reason to listen, this discussion like that in the first video is intended to provide the context for the assertions made in the third and last video about the place of Italian cinema and television studies in Anglophone uh, videographic criticism. Now, as you might expect, and as I'm sure you know, and though it's increasingly found in conferences and in film festivals, videographic criticism emerges mainly in online venues. YouTube tends to host video essays of the popular sort, uh, while platforms like Vimeo tend to host work with uh, academic aspirations. Though, as you can imagine, this distinction between popular and academic doesn't always make sense. Scholarly work finds a dedicated home in the online open access journal In Transition, which was founded in 2014 and is probably, it has become the most prestigious venue for videographic publication, even as other journals have followed suit. In the context of In's Transition, the academic intention is signalled by the creator statement that accompanies each video essay, uh, which is designed to, as their website says, articulate the research aims and process of the work, as well as the ways in which those aims are achieved in the audiovisual form. I won't go into it now, but uh, In Transition also has a very interesting open peer review policy. Check out their website to see more. Now, a growing body of commentary has accompanied the mainstreaming of videographic work in the Academy and an indication of the rising status of videographic criticism or the perception of its importance is the fact that both the Journal of Cinema and Media Studies and Screen, which are two of the most internationally visible and respected journals of cinema and media studies, as you well know, 
Both of these have dedicated special batches of short articles to audiovisual scholarship or to teaching it. Now, moving on to books, key texts among the existing historical, analytical and testimonial scholarship include this volume, the videographic essay edited by the same Christian Keithley I mentioned in the first video, along with his Middlebury colleague Jason Mattel and the prolific academic video essay maker Catherine Grant, who is based at Birkbeck College in London. This book grew out of the Scholarship in Sight and Sound workshops uh, run annually since 2005 at Millbury College, and it contains a variety of texts by both teachers and students who have attended the workshop. Dana and I chose uh, this volume as our textbook for our seminar at OSU. Another important volume is Film Studies in Motion by Thomas Vandenberg and Miklos Kiss. Um, this book was published in 2016, which is the same year as the original first edition of uh, the videographic essay. But it's notable for taking quite a different uh, approach and for offering a strong argument in favour of carrying over the conventions and protocols of pro-scholarship to what they refer to as the audiovisual uh, container. Um, their book has some stern words, it has to be said, for much current practice and is very keen to distinguish popular from academic forms of what it calls the academic research video. I have to give a special mention in the Italian context uh, to Chiara Grizzaffi's I film attraverso i film, which uh, a book which gives a theoretical, formal and genealogical analysis of videographic practice and is apparently being translated for publication in English. The book closes with the comment you see here. And Grizzaffi affirms the multiple hybrid and indeed the ludic tendencies of uh, videographic practice. As such, her position is closer to someone like Catherine Grant than it is to Vandenberg and Kiss, and indeed, uh, Catherine Grant wrote the preface for the book. So that's it for this second short video by me. Um, I've just given you a very, very brief uh, snapshot with some very broad outlines of the venues for videographic criticism and the scholarship about it. Um, in the la third and last video, I'll discuss the place of Italian cinema and television in Anglophone videographic criticism, especially. In this last uh, short video, I want to build on Dana's introduction and on my two earlier videos to discuss the place of Italian cinema, and it will be Italian cinema rather than TV in Anglophone videographic practice and to speak more directly therefore to the summer school theme of mediating Italy in global culture. As you might anticipate, uh, most Anglophone videographic criticism has focused on material in English, especially American film and television. But even in this context, even in the context I mean of uh, that little material which uh, focuses on non-English language uh, filmmaking, Italian material is conspicuously underrepresented. Note, for example, that Chiara Grizzaffi's um, book discussed in my second video mentions only three video essays concerned with Italian themes. One of these is on Rossellini, one on Pasolini, and again we find Coganala's What is Neorealism? The journal In Transition, also discussed in the second video, has published just five video essays wholly or even partly concerned with Italian themes over its 25 issues. And this is including my piece about the Battle of Algiers and, of course, Koganada's uh, What is Neorealism, once again. In sense, this relative absence is good news because it represents an op opportunity for those of us uh, concerned with Italian screen media. Note, though, that the picture that does emerge of Italian cinema, at least, is arguably a problematic one. 
in that it confirms the canon and assumptions of what we might call world cinema cinephilia and of transnational cult viewing. Which is to say that the bulk of videographic material out there on Italian themes is concerned with male auteurs, exportable genres understood to have a masculine address, and of course, neorealism. We have vigorously to correct any sense in screen studies more broadly that these are the only things worth knowing about and worth caring about in relation to the Italian context. It is the case that if you dig a bit deeper and follow up the work of active video makers like Pasquale Iannone, uh, you can find video essays that treat topics like Italian stars. And I also mention here the work done by Sarah Culhan and others in relation to the Italian Cinema Audiences project, which many of you will be aware of. But the impression that Italian cinema is a matter of directors and cult genres is confirmed when we look at key online venues, even beyond those I've already mentioned. Take Audiovisual C, for example, a, a, a forum at Vimeo curated by uh, Catherine Grant, who I mentioned before. Among the site's more than 2,000 videos, the material on Italian themes focuses on exportable genres like the Italian Western and horror, and on directors like Fellini, Antonioni, Visconti, Guadagnino, and Sorrentino. It's striking in this context that, as I explained earlier, Koganada's What is Neorealism has been made a key exemplar of videographic achievement. If you've watched the whole thing, I'm sure you'll agree with Christian Keithley that What is Neorealism is a piece of great rhetorical sophistication. But I want to suggest that this rhetorical achievement is put at the service of a tired opposition between a humanist realism and the Hollywood star machine. Not only that, but as our friend and colleague Catherine O'Raw has suggested, central to this opposition is an oversimplification of neorealism itself. As exemplified by Koganada's closing voiceover statement, in which he says, to ask what is neorealism is to ask what is cinema. What Selznick sees as waste and excess becomes the essence of a different kind of cinema and sensibility, in which shots linger and veer off to include others, in which in-between moments seem to be essential, in which time and place seem more critical than plot or story. To ask what is neorealism, is to ask, what is cinema? So, to sum up, though there are exceptions if you dig around, much of the little videographic criticism that there is on Italian themes, on Italian cinema at least, uh, from the Anglophone context, adds up to a partial, tendentious and decidedly dated picture of Italian cinema. And I admit that my own video essay on the Battle of Algiers has probably not helped in this respect. However, from our perspective as researchers, uh, students and teachers, this dated picture represents an opportunity. It means that our disciplinary expertise on topics dear to world cinema cinephilia, like neorealism, but also on topics less familiar outside Italy, this expertise has the chance to find novel expression in videographic form and to fill some clearing gaps, not to mention. So thanks again for this chance to speak to you. I apologize that I didn't spend a bit more time on TV, uh, but Dana is the expert on that and will speak to you with greater authority than I ever could. I hope these three videos though have been useful for you. I'll hand over again to Dana with the wish that you have a productive discussion and enjoy the rest of the summer school.